faith with me and I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered of Pontius Pilate, who was crucified and unburied. He descended on the third day, he rose again from the dead. He yes, ascended on the Son of the Son of God, the Father Almighty. From the end, he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Church, the communion of faith, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the world.
just have finished. We who are left behind have to continue what she started. And most of all, you have to have love. Because love covers a multitude of sins. And without love, you have no unity. Because they work together. So just as how we come together now, we have to continue to be together. Even when we not gather as a family, keep one another in court. Give a call. Ask how you're doing. If you know someone in your family is struggling, try to help. Try to help. That's what God wants us to do in this time. He wants everybody to do that. Because God is watching. Because the days are counting down. The days are counting down. So we have to always be prepared to do the right thing. And God will be honored. As a family, she's my first sister, my mother's first child. Go on. How many of us left? Of me, but ten of us still, because there's plenty of us. There was plenty of us, and then she left plenty behind. Because you are truthful people. Mm -hmm. We were a truthful people. My mother made 16 children. Mm -hmm. We were a truthful people. And then her children after her children made plenty children. I am the only one who made one child. Okay? Because I tell you, you get to me, nobody can make again, so you know what? Because I'll give you one now. Let's just say you have a child. But you are truthful people. You also can increase how much you try to There's nothing in being truthful. But it's how we live. In that truthfulness, we have to remember. Love one another. As Christ has loved us. Love is the key word. Love one another without love you self destruct. You've got to have love. You've got to have patience. Okay, You've got to time. have unity. Time. Okay.
template and life. A funeral, a funeral is a time when you consider life from the way you live. You see, because when somebody is in this place, there is no more, there's no returning. There's no returning to this realm. There's no coming back into this place. It is gone and lost forever. And so those of us who remain in this place, we are, we must use this time to look at our lives. To see how we live it. To see how we respond to all those things that come in front of us as we live it. You know, I have seen people, particularly in this time, decide that a mask is too uncomfortable. I said, we're going to take the chances. I have heard people say that it's not real, despite all the people that they have seen going and far. And I want us, therefore, to think today to contemplate. Let us contemplate on the possibilities. Let us think about the life we live in and how we live in it. You see, because there are those who are going into the ground today and there's only one person there. There are people who succumb to disease today and there's nobody claiming the body. I want us to consider the how we live our lives. The choices that we make. You see, because the young lady wrote, wrote from, read from the book of Revelation. And the, when you read that sort of Revelation, it says there's no more pain, no more sorrow, except for those of us left behind. And so when we some of us pass, you only make the decision. Are we going out tonight or you come home and sleep? And come into the home with our grandparents and our parents. We put their lives at risk. I want us to think about that. You see, because when we're young, we think we are invincible. We can jump anywhere and do anything. I see a lot of young people gathered here. And I pray, I thank God for that, all family. I want us to think about the decisions that we are making. And there's a lot of death around us. We are living in a time where there's a lot of death. None of us here have experienced this level of death ever. The last time this happened was a long time ago, in the 1800s. And so we are called to respect the situation. What God allows, God allows. We have a choice to make. And that choice is, am I going to live beyond this? You see, because how we live from today is a testimony to what she did, the sacrifices she made. Because of her sacrifices, all of you are here today. You see, because she could have said, I don't want to have so much children and abort. And if she had aborted, I would not see all these faces here today. She didn't make that decision. She brought you into this world and she created a family. And how do you respect, how do you build on that by the choices that you make? I pray and ask God that you all make the right choices. So that you can also say, according to the young lady, that death, there's no sin in death. She did what she had to do. Her sister talked about she produced. She did what she had to do. You are now to do your part. Some of you here are like me, no pensioners. Take care of your parents, young people. Love them enough to stay home with them during this difficult time. Care for them enough. To say to your friends, no, I can't go. Because if I come back here, I could make my mother sick. I could make my father sick. And while I might be able to be strong enough to make it, they might be. Think about what you're doing. Make the right decision. You have children and grandchildren. You have a legacy to continue to live and build. Continue to live and build that legacy. But it only comes from making the right choice. She chose to serve God. At one period in her life, she was a faithful servant of God. I pray that you make a similar choice. That you decide to become a faithful servant of God. 
Because in this time and in this season, the only hope you can find is in God. All those who never pray. All those lying down in Point Hospital, in Kuba Hospital, in Kora Hospital, okay? If they never pray in their life, they pray today. If they didn't understand who God was, they didn't believe, they believe in today. Because he becomes the last hope. When all hope is gone, he is the last hope. And I pray that you could find it in your heart and in your time to spend some time getting to know who God is. And what is possible with God? What is possible for you and your life when God is in your life? I heard your aunt speak and I heard her talk about a relationship with God. I could hear it in what she said. My job as a pastor is to encourage people to love God. You see, because there is a reward. There's a reward, young lady. Talk about the reward. No more sorrow, no more pain. But that is only for those who knew God. That is for those who serve God. That is for those who sought His guidance in their decision making. We need to seek God's guidance in our decision making. What decisions you're going to make today? Think about it before you make it. Think about it. It's a holiday weekend. I'm praying for Trinidad and Tobago. It's a holiday week. We're coming into a holiday week. And I pass through Pinal and I see people shopping like that. Because I know they're planning to cook and eat and have a good time. This morning, Lord. This morning, Father, new news. I want us to see. Let us not miss the signs. You think all them dead men turn up on the boat is just because it might come here and go there? Read the signs. Read the signs. Read the signs. That no matter how we try to deny that this is real, it is real. It is real when it comes inside your house. It is real when it reaches inside your car. It is real when it reaches inside the bedroom next to you. It is real. It is real when your mother in hospital and your care visit her. And you're hoping to get some news. You can't call her. You can't talk to her. You're hoping to get some news. I'm afraid he's in hospital. He don't, he, he don't know what to do again. What to do again? And he's living in a yard. And inside the yard is his brother and his niece. And all of them nine men. Well, your mother dying in the hospital. And the uncle dying in the hospital. And they're not changing their decisions. Think about the decisions that you make. Because the decision that you make today is life and death. Today we are third in the world in terms of death per million. When we was first, we now third in the world deaths per million. Okay? And if we continue with our indiscipline, we're going to become first. Why am I using our funeral to say this? Because this is the time we're living in. This is the time we're living in. Accept the time. Stop pretending that we're going back to what was called normal. This is a new normal. Almost two years, new normal. Think about what you're doing, people. Remember, remember that what your decision could determine whether you'll be here, whether you'll be here and we have a memorial for you next year, or you will be still, or you will be able to see your children and grandchildren grow. I want to remind us that God is good. He's wonderful and true. There's nothing he can't take us out of. Nothing. Ain't nothing that he can't take us out of. Ain't no disease that he can't cure. Ain't no problem that he can't fix. Ain't no issue that he can't find a solution for. There is none. And I ask God today to speak to all of your hearts and to help you to find, you remember, I want you to hold on to the love that she gave. Hold on to the love that she brought into your life. Hold on to that. Hold on to that love. She gave you life, and because of your life, you were able to give life to others. Remember her for that. Bless her for that. Honor her by doing what is right. Honor her. Today she no longer breathes. You can still take your breath. Thank God for that. And as you take every breath through this mask, I want you to remember why you're wearing it. So that your daughter could continue to take a breath. So that your sister and your aunt could continue to take a breath. So that the person you're working next to you could continue to take a breath and breathe. That is why you wear this, so that they could breathe. So that they could breathe, you wear a mask. 
so that your children and grandchildren will never see you. You wear a mask. Wear a mask. The woman lived a long life. And I want us to remember her by remembering the love that she brought. I want us to remember her by making sure we don't join her. She ain't ready for her. She ain't ready for none of us to come there. She's not ready for us. You hear me? She's not ready for us to come and meet her. And so I am speaking her voice. Do what you need to do to make sure. To make sure that you're not ready to go with her. So their families are bearing two and three people from their families. Make sure that you do what is right. She lived a wonderful life. And I want to thank God for the life that she has lived. I want to thank God for all that she brought into this place. I want to thank Jesus for that. Thank God, Moni. When this life is over, fly away. To a woman, God, till I tell sure, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh, Lord, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Just a few more weary days and then, Jesus is the only way. 